Book five, first piece, Bach Gavotte. This is an unaccompanied gavotte uh, with a repeated chord pattern. And it wasn't actually written for violin in the first place. It's stolen from the Bach cello suites, which are beautiful and transposed for violin so that we too can play them. So first chord or first note starts from the A and the D string. I like to start in the top half of my bow, just above the middle. And when I play this chord, you'll see that my arm is in line with my bow. My elbow drops in first and brings the bow rolling over the strings. So this feeling of collapsing in the right elbow is engaged in the chord and it's worth just practicing this five times let's do it five times ready go set collapse set collapse set collapse one more collapse okay so the elbows relax the, the shoulders very relaxed and floppy in the joint and my Tummy is strong so that my back can be soft and allow that shoulder blade to move. If I've got kind of a loose switched off lower body, then I've got a lot of tension in my back to hold onto my stuff. No, I want my fingertips to hold onto my bow and then rest it on the violin so that the violin's actually supporting the weight of the bow. The violin's weight is supported by my heavy head holding it on my shoulder. So there's no tension in this arm. And then I can just let the first finger fall on and I can let the right elbow come in for the chord. Ready? Go. Great. Circle round and catch the F sharp. And set up your new chord with the first finger on A and E. Playing a nice fifth. So we've gone from just the E string with the first finger to the A and the E string with the first finger. And when we do that, the fingers really focused on playing the space between the strings and that's how you get accurate intonation on A and E. So think of putting your first finger on the, in the space between the strings rather than putting it on an A and ugh, slouching across to E or putting it on E and trying to nab A under your fingernail. No, aim for the space between the E and A strings. Okay, first chord just on the E string. Breathe in and then collapse. <laughs> Set, great, ready, go. Sorry, I've added an extra A, that was completely an error on my part. Ready, go. Great, so we just need to be crafty and quick with our first finger. If you want to pause this and practice that, go for your life. Let's do the next little bit. Starting from the very beginning, collapse. Set the first finger on D string. So we've got first finger across to D, third finger on A. And we're just catching it under the first note. So the bow kind of plucks the D string and then crosses levels to hit just the A string. Again. Great, let's play from the start up to there. Ready, and. finger on the A to grab the grace note. Oh, that's another perfect fifth. My third finger is aiming for the space between the A and the E strings. Remember, just like first finger did. Move. So I do have to do a tiny little hop because here it's just on the E string. Hop. Okay, do that much again. Set the second finger on and. Same kind of feeling when we play that grace note. My elbow's dropping. I don't want to play and push the bow into the string. It's an ugly sound. Elbow drops. One more time and we'll go on. Ready and. Just catch the open A string under your G. 
Again, you might want to look and make sure you're catching both strings. Go. Go. I think I just had the wrong bow. Hang on. I did. Up bow first. Sorry. Go again with an up bow first. Then we set up for our first chord again. Set the first finger on E. Make sure the shoulder's relaxed. Move the one across. Put the one on. Second and third finger are cuddled up together. Okay, let's play that little sequence. Yun dun da ya da 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 dun da. We've got two and three chord. Just the A string. Add the one. And now we leave the two there and roll the bow so it's just on the A string, ready for the continuing. Now, I like this because it's all built around the third finger. We've got the C sharp and the A, two and the three, touching. Set the fourth finger on A string. You will need to bring your elbow through to do this. If you don't bring your elbow through, this happens. Fourth finger hits the E string as well. Bring your elbow through so that fourth finger is bridging the E string. Doesn't sound a lot better, does it? But that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Augmented fifth. Nasty little interval. A little bit poignant. Let's try some the ta da tum ta The repeat sign at bar nine. Again, I cracked mine. I put my bow down too hard. Yeah, make sure you've got circular motions, this feeling of around. One and three. This is really closely related to the bar quarry in book three. It feels so similar to play. Probably because they're by the same guy. Who knew? Let's try from the... Okay, bar nine, and just play all separate bows nice and slowly. Ready, and. Much easier separate bows. Let's do that again. Ready, and. Pivoting on that second finger. Move it back. Oh, now that's a niggly little spot that will take quite a lot of drilling, okay? This A sharp business. even slower than that. Ready? Stop, stop, stop. That speed. Again, play. Again, play. Keep your bow shut. A little faster now. Again, play. Again, and. Once more, please. Okay, feeling better? Trust me, you play it like that a few times, going from very slow up to moderate, you'll have it nailed. Don't try and play it at the moderate tempo tomorrow. Start slow again, like so slow it's boring and really easy because then you can't get it wrong and you won't get it wrong and you'll only play it successfully. 
Let's go all the way back to. Okay, I'm going to go a little faster. I'm going to keep the bowing separate still. If you want to play it deadly slow again, just hit pause and do that. Ready, and. Correctly. This is why it's important to practice it with short bows. Ready, and. those slurs because they are a little irregular and you might need to go through them quite slowly and carefully with a fine tooth comb. Okay, so it's your music, you write on your music. I'll leave you with that idea, let's head on to the next section. Starting with our grease. Ah, we know how to do this, this is old, go again. Again. Don't you hate it when something's a little out of tune? Same spot, uh, bar 16. through 22 it's the last line of the first page because we have those long slurs to fit in and they feel a lot like the long slurs in Bach Barre in book three not so tricky you may also find some similarities between this and the Bach Gavotte in D major in book three as well. okay so if, if anything in here is feeling clunky or difficult or just uh, alien go back to book three and play the Gavotte in D major and the Bach Barre and they will really help you. They've got most of the technique that you need to, to make this successful. Okay, 22 and three and three. One on A and D. Be careful of the second finger's intonation on the first line of the second page, this. Again. Then repeat the C sharp. G. C sharp. Second finger's alternating between a high and a low position and it's really important that you have it crammed beside the first finger or snuggled up to the third finger not sitting out in the middle somewhere where it's neither sharp nor natural. Again, ready and... between the strings. 
Oh, sorry. I was so perfectly in the middle that I didn't have enough pressure on either string. Quite dangerous. Okay, one more time from... Ready, and... because that's the end of the first section. Hmm, I see lots of chords. However, I see that block of chords repeated lots of times. So this is great. We're going to do a bit of investment into this part and then we can just plug it in and we'll be fine. Let's play. Ready, go. Add the second finger to D string, F sharp. Okay, A, F sharp. Ready, go. Ready, go. Got it? Cool. Add the third finger right beside the two and drop the first finger onto the A string. Take the second finger to the A string and they're a whole tone apart which feels really wide because we're down in first position. Yep, from the A. Three, one, one, two, three on A, nothing else. Just a nice D octave, easy. Let's do that again. playing strokes quite short and stop so that we don't get in a slow habit of using way too much bow. Ready, 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 ready. Again. Ready, 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 ready. One more. Ready, 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 ready. Now we're going to go up, 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 down. Ah, like this. In a minute we'll do it with the chords but you need to do that again and make sure that you're landing each lift before you play the note land play land play land play land play not no. land play land play land play land play and my whole arm is engaged in this My fingers are soft so that they're kind of like my shock absorbers. If you play this with a frozen bow hold, then you have to land the bow perfectly with just your arm. Uh, it's kind of like trying to land a plane without any landing gear. Like, you can do it, but I don't like your chances, <laughs> even with a really good pilot. So, this is your landing gear. This is going to absorb all the shock of the, oh, my arm didn't quite calibrate exactly the movement I needed, but my fingers will take up the fine detail. Okay, so this feeling, these guys, these squids, I, uh, we use them back in book four quite a lot. 
They're really handy in book five too. Let's go. On, 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 on. Cool, again. On, 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 on. And we started working on this way back in book two, playing. Or, oh, kind of in witches dance too. On, on. Anyway, you have a bow lift really, you've already worked on this idea of put the bow on and then play the knot, not just crash into the string and make a sound because it will be a crappy sound. Let's try it with the chords. If that's a total disaster, maybe you want to stop and practice. I reckon though you, sh you should be right. If you're not, press pause, I'll never know about it. Ready? Chord, chord, chord. Again, ready, go. Okay, now let's add the start onto that, which is. Oh, great, we already know how to do this. Collapse the right arm, strong tummy. easy the D just sits under the first note now set back on the D string and catch your grace note F sharp I think that grace note might be the trickiest thing to play in this whole section the chords are pretty easy once you've practiced them setting the bone is pretty easy once you've practiced it but getting that grace note to sound cleanly is often challenging so let's play Make sure after the fall, set the two on and cross, cross, again, again, one more. Great, because that's a tricky transition, so it makes sense to boil it down to the smallest idea that we can and practice the smallest thing 20 times. Don't practice the biggest thing 20 times, that's a huge waste. Find the two note or the three note interaction that's giving you grief and practice that thing. It's the smartest way you can ever fix a problem. Okay, again from the tri-da-dum, bom 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 ready, and. Round, round, round. Set. That's your thousand times bit, right there, from bar 29 to 32, that's your thousand time. Make yourself a sheep. I'm serious. Let's do it again. Ready, and. Again, ready, go. Obviously pause this video and practice it as many times as you want. It actually doesn't take that long. So set yourself a goal of 10 times a day or whatever you want to do. Let's continue and see what the next part has in store for us. So that's a really kind of delicate piano phrase that I wasn't playing delicately at all. I was just playing the notes clearly. But when you phrase it, Hey, this next part looks familiar. <gasps> oh, new idea. Now you can 
see why I've invested so much time and energy into those chords. Uh, just quickly, looking at the string crossings in 41, and we've got this feeling of ah, uh, ah. Uh. You can see my elbow sitting at the lowest string, and I'm just lifting the bow up. And then you want to think, ah, uh, the melody is da 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 da. Those A's don't need to be there at all. It's quite pleasant without them. That's actually the bones of what we're playing. The A's are just there for decoration. bits pointed out. As I said, most of this piece you learned back in book three. There's not a lot in there that's new. Um, I, I do love the fact that even that chord we've already played it back in book three. That's old. This feeling of crossing the string. Two strings then one. That's back in book three. So it's not a new idea, it's just maybe that you haven't thought about it in a while because it's easy for you now. You already know how to play most of this piece. Just wrap your fingers around it. And the best way to do that is slowly and giving yourself lots of opportunities for repetition. Find the little chunks that trip you up. Find the smallest part of the problem because it's usually only two or three notes. Practice that and then add the note before and then add the note after, and then add the note before, and add the note after, until you make the chunk larger and larger, and it will envelop the whole phrase and give you a really nice smooth transition. Because this is such a great piece to practice learning how to learn on, and that's what will get you a really long way. If you can learn how to learn, you can learn anything. Good luck.